Welcome back. Still with us in the studio, Ilsa Smuts, who's head of marketing at FNB Core Banking Solutions, Kalani Pillay, CEO of Sabric, and joining us from our bureau in Cape Town, Ian Duvenach, the uh, principal consultant for Africa from Frost and Solomon. Ian, let's, let's just go back to you. We've, we've had massive changes in not only South Africa, but throughout Africa um, with regards to mobile banking. Oh, by the way, if you've just joined us, we're talking about banking fraud, by the way. Um, and why were you late in any case? Don't do that next time. Um, the, the massive changes through South Africa and Africa in, in the use of mobiles for banking, um, because there's some countries in Africa where it's almost impossible to get a credit card. The only way to transact is through your mobile phone. Um, where, where, do you, where are you guys seeing this going? Most of the incident at the moment, um, as, as far as what we've picked up, has, is still in the direct contact. It is still in contacting the customer to, to elicit a response in some form and gather information. Um, that and, and then the use of these payment mechanisms in, on other sites. And the integration between all the different um, online communities at the moment, that, that's quite an interesting thing to watch, especially with some security concerns that's been, been raised recently on, on other websites. It's not always directly customer related. Are you, wh where are your major worries with, with all of these, the, the, the integration with these social websites? Because um, th there, are, there must be huge leaks and, and opportunities for fraudsters to get involved there. I think on the one side, it's an excellent opportunity, obviously, to make banking more accessible and more cost-effective by serving it in the environment that you're comfortable. But with the integration with, with Facebook and Mixit and, and all these other social platforms, it, it opens the obvious risks um, the, the same, to the same extent that these websites themselves are. Um, and I think that is the, the thing. Once you start doing payments across platform, access mm -hmm. your account information uh, across different channels. That is effectively where some security measures uh, might start falling over. Um, because the, the, there's all sorts of encouragement, or has been in the last few years, uh, for people to start uh, considering doing payments via cell phones and that. So, uh, but you were saying, Kalyani, that, that you haven't seen a huge incidence of fraud within this particular space. We, we haven't seen um, that yet, and I suppose also because the volumes of people that are actually using that platform may not as be as great as those who are using other platforms to do their banking. But so far we haven't. What we've seen in terms of the use of the cell phone is because you have one-time passwords coming to a cell phone uh, that enables people to continue with their internet transfers or, or transactions. Uh, we have seen incidents of where there's been an interception of that particular phone we've had. Um, number portability where people have unlawfully and uh, gone ahead and, and notified mobile service providers that the number's been ported. They use various mechanisms either to annoy you to an extent of where you switch your phone off or call you to say that this is the mobile service provider doing some kind of maintenance and that you need to switch your phone off for the next two hours or that you won't have access for the next two hours. So they use various means to try and, and, and compromise the platforms, uh, platforms that you're using. But certainly from those using cell phone to do banking, we, we've not seen too much yet. Ian, what sort of rate are we growing at here in this mobile banking world? The mobile banking world, um, it, it is growing massively. The, the numbers are obviously um, not all fully disclosed. I, I think between mobile payments and mobile banking, um, you have to differentiate a little bit. But in mobile banking, especially with FNB um, launching the app obviously first, um, some of the other, ba the other banks following, um, as, the, as all these banks start getting their applications online, um, we're expecting to, to see quite a large uptake um, in, the, in the customer base. Are you seeing a downturn in the use of cards as a result of the mobile banking becoming something that's getting bigger and bigger? Or I not really? No, I think it's um, people, are, all of them are on the app. Um, people are very mobile, but there are specific points where you use a card to pay for shops and for fuel these days and so on. People use their cards and um, for, for um, the, people also have specific preferences. They might have a specific preference to, let's say, online banking. Um, but they then, if they don't have access to a computer at that point or if they don't have an iPad or so for a banking app um, a transaction, they will use another form. So they will do their banking and they will have preferences, um, but generally then they'll make a plan. So yeah, the, it, it just depends on the situation. So it's um, really just m making more and more offers to 
possible yeah. ways of entry into yeah. doing your banking? I think the big, biggest thing is um, it's not cash. It's away from cash mostly. Now, I've asked this checks. question before, and I'm going to ask you this time. Is there anybody writing checks anymore? <laughs> we actually still have people yeah. um, writing checks. It's just in some instances, and especially I think more in the business um, segments, it is just still a way of doing it. And um, I think we also talked about generations earlier. Some, for some people, it's just a more comfortable way of, of doing banking. Um, so yeah, I think we, we're not at a point where we're saying we're going to do away with checks. Um, it's a natural thing. We do what the, what the market likes, um, but we do um, present them with the alternatives. So we do a lot of, if you want to call it um, client education, to say, we see you writing checks here, are there alternatives? But some people are just, you know, they want to do it the way they, they like and that's, that's their right. So. Kalyani, the, the, who, who are these fraudsters? Do, do we know who they are? Are they, are they local? Are they international? You, you know, you have, you have a whole host of, of, of syndicates that are actually operating on the different, in, in respect of the different crime types. Um, you find that with the with the uh, more electronic, the crimes that are committed on, on electronic platforms certainly can be syndicates that operate from anywhere in the world. They could actually solicit people from um, different countries. It doesn't really matter. They, they, they're faceless, they're borderless. It makes it extremely difficult in the whole cyber crime space to be able to deal with these, these syndicates. Um, with regard to other crime types, yes, we have worked quite, we work closely with the South African Police Service on behalf of the banks and we have identified a number of syndicates. There are people who are known, who've been profiled and who have been linked to a number of cases. There have been some significant arrests. Organized crime, the very nature of it is that there's people that have got their tentacles out all over the place. Uh, so you, you pick up a few people and you hope that eventually you can start bringing in the rest of that. Or if you pick up the kingpins, hopefully you, 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 you try to get to the bottom of it. But I must say that the, the, the organized syndicates are really very agile. Them, if they get hurt too much, they regroup. We've seen that. They regroup and they start their operations again. Uh, but we've had a number of successes where um, we've, uh, arrests have been made and we have seen significant decreases in those particular types of crimes. Ian, what, what would you say is your, if, you, if you're looking at the, the, the mobile environment, what would your biggest fear be um, relating to, to bank fraud? What, what, what's the single biggest problem that banks could face going forward in that, that particular area? I think it will be the, the use for the mobile phone for, for other applications. Um, I think if you look at near field communication type of payments, um, just the customer is growing accustomed to using the mobile phone more and more. And that requirement, as was stated earlier, you kind of do what the customers require. I think that would be the biggest concern, that, that the expectation would be there to push the boundaries. And then with that, it opens a whole host of other risks. It's, once again, it, all of these, the, Every conversation we're having here, because there's, there's, there's sort of three different conversations happening, they all seem to come back to one thing, and that is the responsibility of the individual who is engaging with a banking institution. Okay. And, and their responsibility to, as we were saying in the first half of the show, as you were saying, Kalyani, to, to look after their password, to make sure that they, it's not, it doesn't get out or anything like mm. that. So this education process is becoming more and more important. That's right. I think we see it as a partnership um, between all the, the groups that we've mentioned, but the biggest um, point is, is, is that client and that person who has the card or the, the pen, and that's just the easiest way of preventing it. They have the power within their hands to do it, um, so if they do it, that goes a long way. And obviously we all pick up on all the trends and we try and give out the most recent information to our clients to, to help that partnership and to strengthen it. Okay, Ian, what is your best piece of advice you could give to somebody who is working in that mobile environment as a client of a, of a bank? I think it would be to be reactive if you receive messages from a bank and verify that every transaction obviously was something that you actually executed and not be reactive to silly messages that try and elicit responses. I think it would just be kind of keeping level ahead in, in receiving information from these fraudsters. Final word from you. 
madame. I, I think and by the way, I love your hair. I should have said that right <laughs> in the beginning. Uh, I think certainly, as Ilsa said, I mean, the message doesn't change. It's absolute not negotiable. You unfortunately are forced by the perpetrators to be extra vigilant. Don't give out your details. Don't write down your passwords anyway. Jeremy, find mm. a new way to look, <laughs> to, key, to remember your password. But really, don't take it for granted that, you know, you are safe. You, I think the perpetrators focus on the fact and, and gain from the fact that everybody takes care and protects themselves differently. Banks have shut down the systems in terms of allowing people in. They're quite good at protecting their clients from that perspective. But the clients, each one of us does it differently. So don't respond to any email asking for personal information or banking. It's a not negotiable. Don't respond to any SMS asking for that. If you're not sure, just pick the phone up and call your bank yourself or contact your bank directly. Don't respond to anything you receive. I think just you know, making sure that you're always careful and don't take help from somebody that you don't know who they are because we've had instances of where people purport to be from a bank that even wear clothes or logos of a bank mm. and try to, uh, don't do that. Rather go into a bank branch and ask for help. Thank you very much. Ian in Cape Town, thank you Ilsa. Thank, thank you, you Kalyani for your time. Uh, and thank you for the advice that you've given us. And hopefully, we'll all listen to it. I'll have to go home and tear up that little book of mine and find another way of making sure that I remember my passwords and, and all those sort of things. I don't know how I'm going to do that. I'm getting old now. I've got Alzheimer's light coming on, so uh, it doesn't really help that much.